Welcome to the fourth video for module eight of Tech 206. Uh, we were just about running out of time when we were talking about this example in the last video and may have misspoke, so I wanna make sure that we're clear on uh, the datum feature simulators here. So in this application, we have uh, datum A, which is being referenced uh, regardless of material boundary. So therefore you need an adjustable feature simulator to go around the outside here. Whereas at the same time, datum B is being referenced as a surface at maximum material boundary. And in this case, you would have a fixed boundary out, set out here. And so this would have to be uh, obviously set up in a fixture in some special way where this adjusted so that this could slide inside of it and adjust for size. While at the same time, this was restricting rotation to a degree, uh, but it would uh, allow for some slop or some twisting in here when you were moving out beyond the maximum material boundary. So this was a, a very special case, which probably won't occur very often. A cylindrical datum feature MMB primary in certain applications, the function of a part requires using a cylindrical feature of size as a datum feature reference primary at MMB. So in this situation here, uh, let's see, we have the primary datum is datum B, which is referenced at maximum material boundary at 10 plus or minus uh, 0.2. So maximum material condition for this one would occur at 9.8. And so therefore your datum feature simulator is a fixed, fixed gauge or plug at uh, 9.8 fixed pin, it says here. And uh, that would of course allow some clearance or slop in it as you get away from uh, max material condition. And in this situation, we have datum A, which is the external feature. Uh, it is referenced here at maximum material boundary, so therefore it's 16.0, uh, 16.6. Uh, maximum material boundary occurs at 16.6. So in this case, your datum feature simulator is an internal cylinder with the 16.6 MMB for your size. This is a planar feature of size datum feature MMB boundary. So we have a width feature that is being referenced as a datum feature and primary at MMB. So let's take a look here. Datum C is your width feature from 12.0 to 12.6. And so of course it's an internal feature. So MMB occurs when you are at 12.0. Uh, Notice it's being specified at MMB in relation to this feature here. And so therefore, you would have a fixed uh, 12 millimeter wide gauge that would fit in here. And as this feature got away from MMB, you would have clearance uh, between the gauge and the actual part. The reverse application, of course, we have the external feature of size being specified as your datum at maximum material boundary. So uh, maximum material boundary occurs at uh, 20.4. And here you would have some type of a uh, fixed set of uh, parallels or something or jaws or something like that, but they would fix, they wouldn't move, and they would be at uh, 20.4. And then, of course, as this feature of size uh, came away from material, maximum material boundary, then uh, you would have some clearance or slop in the gauge, and that would be allowable. Now, this is a planar surface datum feature primary and cylindrical datum feature uh, MMB secondary. So the primary does not have any uh, modifier on it. So it is regardless of material boundary. So the part therefore on datum A would sit flat on the plate. However, datum B that is being referenced here at maximum material boundary. So it would be a fixed size pin and it would be at the uh, MMB condition but also taking into consideration the tolerance value here. So 18.0 is maximum material condition plus or rather minus 0.2, and that gives you 17.8 as your MMB. So uh, this is a summary of the condition here we just looked at. 
primary uh, datum feature is a surface. Secondary is a cylindrical datum at MMB. This uh, summarizes what we just looked at. The part will have a minimum three point of contact on the primary. The secondary datum feature simulator is fixed in size. It is perpendicular to the primary. The datum reference frame consists of a primary plane and two planes passing through the secondary datum axis at 90 degrees to the primary. Five degrees of freedom are constrained, three translational, two rotational, and datum feature shift may be available. Now, take it one step further, and we have the slot in the part, and that becomes our tertiary datum reference. So just as we saw before, we have the flat plane always in contact with the part. Uh, we have a datum feature simulator that is fixed for the center hole. It's a fixed uh, plug, fixed pin, because this is called out at MMB. This is likewise called out at MMB, so there is a fixed simulator here that it is going to uh, engage. And what size will it be? The width is called out here at 12.2 to 12.8. So max material condition is 12.2, but we also have taken into consideration this tolerance of 0.2. And we subtract that from it as well. So it becomes 12 for the size of our max material uh, boundary and of our datum feature simulator. Now we have planar surface primary, cylindrical datum feature secondary, and width feature uh, tertiary. So there's a summary of what we just looked at. The part will be a minimum of three points of contact at the primary. The secondary datum feature is fixed in size, MMB. It's perpendicular to the primary. The datum reference frame consists of a primary plane and two planes passing through the secondary datum. A second and third datum plane is associated with the datum axis. The tertiary datum constrains rotation of the second and third datum planes. All six degrees of freedom are constrained. A datum feature shift is permissible and the part is allowed to shift within the looseness between the datum feature and the datum feature simulators. Coaxial datum features as primary datum feature MMB. Notice first of all how you specify this. It's A-B, but there is an M symbol after each one of them. Uh, again, it establishes a single primary datum, not two datums. And now you have the same situation as we looked at before, but this is fixed and this is fixed, so there can be clearance in between here and, and, and the feature. And what are the sizes? Well, let's take a look. Maximum material condition on this one occurs at 18.2. There is no additional modif modification to it because of a feature control frame. So this one is a fixed gauge at 18.2. And over here, Maximum material condition will occur at 10, so it's a fixed gauge at 10 millimeters in diameter. Coaxial datum features as primary. Okay, it's a summary of what we just looked at. Datum is an axis line. The axis of the datum feature simulators is the datum axis. Uh, datum feature simulators are fixed at MMB size. The part is oriented by the datum feature simulator. The datum reference frame consists of two planes passing through the datum axis, and four degrees of freedom are constrained, two translational, two rotational. This is a pattern of holes as a datum feature MMB secondary. So let's take a look here. The Datum A is the surface here. Datum B is the uh, pattern of holes. So that's kind of interesting. The pattern is the datum. And then we come up here, and this hole is referenced in relation to the pattern, okay, to datum B. And so how does that work out? The datum feature simulator is four fixed size 4.2 MMB gauge pins. Why? Well, we take a look at datum B. It is, the holes are 4.4 to 4.8. 
maximum material condition occurs at 4.4, but we have the position tolerance of 0.2 has to be subtracted. We get to 4.2 uh, for our maximum material boundary gauge pins, but there's four of them uh, located at position. So in this situation, the part will have a minimum of three points of contact with the primary datum feature simulator. The datum feature simulator for the secondary datum will be a fixed size gauge element equal to the MMB of each hole at the MMB size. The datum reference frame consists of a plane and an axis 90 degrees to the plane. All six degrees of freedom are constrained, three translational, three rotational. Datum feature shift is permissible. The part is allowed to shift within the looseness between the datum features and the datum feature simulators. The effects of changing the datum feature reference sequence in a feature control frame. So this is looking at, okay, is it A then B or is it B then A? Or is it B then A with a maximum material or rather maximum material uh, boundary modifier? So in the different situations here, uh, B is this surface and A is this cylinder. The cylinder is 9.8 to 10.2 and it has no, it has a zero tolerance, uh, uh, perpendicular tolerance called out. We'll get into zero tolerance uh, feature control frames a little bit further on in this course. But let's take a look at what happens. So now datum A is primary. And so it needs to set up against this. Uh, it needs to set, I'm rather, datum A is primary, sorry. It needs to set against uh, this surface here. And it needs to be adjustable because datum A is no, no way modified. And then and it would contact datum B as your secondary uh, datum feature. Now B is primary, so now it has to sit flat against here. And then it has to have an adjustable uh, gauge here for datum A. And now in this case, again, it sits against B as the primary, but datum A is fixed. So now, because it's at max material boundary, so now this does not have to be in continuous contact here. Okay, let's stop there. Uh, and then we'll pick up with a new video for the HSM Express portion of the lecture.